Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this series of videos, we are talking about uh, the protein transport inside the cell. We've been talking about the protein trafficking and the secretory pathways of the proteins. Now in this particular lecture, we will see how exactly proteins are destined towards mitochondria and how a protein made inside the cell is transported inside the mitochondria. So stay tuned and watch the video. Now the first thing that you need to know before understanding the transport of proteins in different organelles like mitochondria, nucleus, chloroplasts in case of protein, uh, uh, plants, in all these cases there are two separate pathways of protein synthesis that are followed. Now normally the general way of protein synthesis that we know is when the ribosome is attached to the other SRP proteins and also attached to the ER or endoplasmic reticulum. That is known as a rough endoplasmic reticulum and the protein synthesized is inserted into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Now normally this is the pathway for the secretory proteins which should be released outside the cell. While on the other hand the proteins which are destined for mitochondria or chloroplast. These are the proteins which are not generally produced uh, from the rough endoplasmic uh, reticulum. They are produced in the cytosol. So we have mRNA and the ribosome is translating that and making a protein in the cytosol itself without being attached to the endoplasmic reticulum and inserting the protein into the ER lumen. So here once the protein is produced in the cytosol, then we need separate proteins that will bind with their mRNA and, and actually separate proteins that will bind to the newly made protein so that uh, the protein can be linearized and can be properly transported inside the target organelle and generally we need a lot of heat shock proteins which are known as chaperones. Those are playing an important role in proper folding of the protein and guiding the protein into the proper destination. So keeping in mind for the destination, in this case the destination is mitochondria and if I draw mitochondrial structure, it looks something like this. I'll be drawing a structure which is simpler so I'm not drawing any cristy here in the middle of the mitochondrial structure. In the simplest drawing what we have here is the outer membrane, the inner membrane and we have the matrix, right? These are the three regions of the mitochondria. Now normally when we talk about proteins to be delivered inside the mitochondria, we are talking about delivery of a protein into the matrix. While there are some cases where the protein needs to be delivered into the inner mitochondrial membrane or let's say like this and sometime also the protein needs to be delivered in the inner mitochondrial membrane as a multi-pass protein as you can see it here or even a single pass protein like this one. So there are different types of proteins and the delivery of those different proteins and the location of the delivery are also different. We will see how exactly a protein gets delivered into the mitochondria with all these three types of protein destination that is matrix, inner mitochondrial membrane for a single pass protein and inner mitochondrial membrane for multi-pass protein. Now once you understand the delivery mechanism for one, you will understand the delivery mechanism for all of it because they follow very similar pathways. Uh, almost every single pathway at the beginning are the same. So let's begin with it. As I told you at the very beginning, we have the mRNA in the cytosol and ribosome helps in translating the mRNA and making the target protein. Okay. So let's say here they are making the target protein. So once the protein is being made, let's say it gets released, that protein should contain a specific signal sequence at the end terminal end of the polypeptide chain. Now that sequence is a mitochondrial localization signal. So once they have this signal sequence, that means that polypeptide is tagged to be delivered inside the mitochondrial matrix. If it contains a separate tag, let's say another tag in the middle, that is going to target that protein to the inner mitochondrial membrane. That's how all the process of protein delivery works. There should be a proper address. Like if you, if you imagine this whole system as a delivery of postal cards, then they should also carry addresses. 
So for a specific address, they should be delivered in a specific place. Now here, once we have the polypeptide with a specific address, signal sequence, then that polypeptide remain attached with several different proteins and we call them HSP. HSP, heat shock protein, simply HSP70 playing an important role by involving an interaction with the polypeptide chain and that allows the protein not to be misfolded and it will allow the protein to be properly guided towards this destination. Now the idea is how exactly the protein should be transported in the mitochondria. For any type of transport, we know that we should have any transporter that is known as translocon, also known as translocator in all those target organelles. So in mitochondria also, we have the translocon. And actually there are three types of translocons that we are interested to talk about. The one type is team complex. Second one is a TOM, TOM complex. And the third one is OXA. These are the three types of translocons that are involved in the process of transport of polypeptide inside the mitochondria. Now if we look at team, there are two types of team that are found in the process of translocator that is team 23 and team 22. Now let's begin with the idea of a protein delivery into the mitochondrial matrix. Now the thing is, now let's let me erase this part and let's say let's draw some of these translocons. Now the first translocons that we'll draw will be the TOM complex. So let's draw the TOM complex. TOM complex carries two different regions. One is the receptor, another one is the channel, the transporter associated with the TOM complex. That altogether is known as the TOM complex containing two units, a receptor and a translocator, which carries a channel. Now what happens here, the target protein, the polypeptide with the signal sequence binds to the receptor. So let me draw it here. Here we go. And the rest of the polypeptide attached with all those heat shock proteins. This attached to the TOM complex. Then what it will do is TOM complex utilizes energy from the ATP hydrolysis and helps to transfer this chain through this channel into the mitochondrial matrix. But TOM complex, the drawing in this picture is not clear. It's a wrong drawing up to this region. I draw it wrong because to make you realize that there is a reason most of the people make mistake. So the idea here is TOM complex is not two membrane spanning. That's the wrong thing about this drawing. The drawing should, should be like this. So let me change it like this. So TOM complex is only present in one membrane. That is the outer membrane of mitochondria only. Remember that. Okay. TOM complex cannot directly insert the target polypeptide into the mitochondrial matrix. It requires the help of another complex that is known as the TEAM23 complex. Without TEAM23, TOM complex will not be able to transfer the polypeptide inside the mitochondrial matrix alone. Keep this thing in your mind. Because a lot of time questions being asked from this region in CSI net exam and people make mistake in this point. Now why? Because if you look at the structure here, here we have a team complex. The, the thing about team complex is team complex also contains a channel region, but it also contains an anchor domain that is attached to the both inner and outer membrane. So with the help of this anchor region of team 23 protein, it's anchored to both inner and outer mitochondrial membrane, but the actual translocator is located in the inner membrane. So team 23 start aligning itself to this TOM translocator so that both of them together creates a tunnel through both inner and outer mitochondrial membrane. As they create a complete tunnel through which this target protein can insert into the matrix. So now, this ATP hydrolysis here, 
provides the energy and that allows the transfer of this polypeptide through the stomp and team 23 complex into the mitochondrial matrix now this process requires atp and also it requires proton gradient we all know that there's a proton gradient across the mitochondrial inner membrane right more protons out in the inner membrane space compared to the matrix of the mitochondria that proton gradient helps the movement of the proteins inside but there is another important protein that helps in the process of the transport of the polypeptide into the matrix and that is mitochondrial heat shock protein 70 or mitochondrial hsp 70 we know the hsp 70 that is involved in this process here is known as the cytosolic hsp 70 but once it's inside like for example say here once a little part once a little bit of the polypeptide start taking entry let's say this is the polypeptide start taking entry inside the matrix that signal sequence soon will be recognized by different peptidase enzymes and they will cleave uh, the polypeptide right after the signal sequence so the fragment of signal sequence will be removed and released into the matrix and while rest of the polypeptide needs to be dragged in inside the cell so how exactly they can drag it inside the mitochondrial matrix with the help of another mitochondrial hsp 70 so once it's taking entry inside mitochondrial hsp 70 start attached start attaching itself with it and it also takes energy source from atp hydrolysis sorry and this is an energy driven process while every single round the ATP gets hydrolyzed, the HSP70 position itself in a separate conformation along with the polypeptide by calling it bridge ratcheting movement or call it cross bridge ratcheting movement. That is, just imagine you are pulling something in. So just imagine this polypeptide as a rope and the job here is to pull that rope inside the mitochondrial matrix and to do that is you have your hands so what you do create a rushing movement the idea of rushing movement is moving things in the opposite direction so that it creates a tension that drags uh, the polypeptide in this case into the mitochondrial matrix and that is what with the help of mitochondrial hsp70 that are present inside the mitochondrial matrix only so once that thing is done the polypeptide will be transferred into the mitochondrial matrix so that is the job uh, of transferring a mitochondrial matrix proteins inside the mitochondria with the help of team 23 and tom complex now the term is the idea is sometimes also to put a protein into the inner mitochondrial membrane now in that case what we can do for the transfer of a protein into the inner mitochondrial membrane we also need a separate signal sequence now in those cases the protein contains two signal sequences the first signal sequence is to deliver the protein towards mitochondria and the second signal sequence is to properly embed it into the inner mitochondrial membrane right so here once the process of delivery of, of the protein into the matrix is almost done so once once the polypeptides start entering there the first signal sequence gets cleaved at this point they found out the second signal sequence and let's say the second signal sequence is the sequence for embedding it into the inner mitochondrial membrane then what they will do is there is another translocator that is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane itself and one of such is oxa another one is the team 22 so both of them oxa and team 22 are kind of translocator that are present in the inner mitochondrial membrane and have and do the job of transferring uh, that target polypeptide containing the inner membrane spanning region to the inner membrane of the mitochondria okay now between oxa and team 22 they have separate job of either transferring a single pass protein or transferring multi pass protein inside Normally here you see the oxa will do the job of transferring a single transmembrane protein into the inner membrane of mitochondria while team 22 complex 
uh, will do the job of transpanning proteins into the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, the work will be very similar that sometimes they can transfer the complete protein into the mitochondrial matrix and then they embed it or sometimes even during the process of transport once they found out the signal region for embedding it into the inner mitochondrial membrane they just transfer it from one translocator to the next and put it into the inner mitochondrial membrane that's how the process of mitochondrial protein delivery is done okay so now the final question about mitochondrial protein delivery is why at all we need mitochondrial protein delivery and the answer to that is very simple mitochondria is powerhouse of our body because it helps in generating a lot of energy in terms of ATP because if you look at cellular respiration in the oxidative mode aerobic mode of cellular respiration the maximum ATP generated with the help of electron transport chain is occurring in the mitochondria and in that case mitochondria are playing a vital role of doing so so it requires so many enzymes and all those are proteins so we need to produce them in the cytosol and transfer them to the mitochondria so that the mitochondria can function properly and keep generating the energy source for the cell so that's all about how mitochondrial protein transport works if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and share this video with your friends thank you